uh, as I've mentioned, I'll be renaming people uh, that are official members. And thank you for joining us this morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton's Sunday morning Zoom service. My name is Gordon Ritchie. Karen Mills and I will be your service leaders this morning, and we certainly do hope you feel welcome here. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We celebrate diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and aspire to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but are connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. I'd like to invite Jan McMillan to offer our land acknowledgement. We gather today in gratitude on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. As part of that relationship, we begin today to share with you the new Indigenous names that have been given to Edmonton's 12 redrawn municipal awards. The names were chosen by a panel of 17 Indigenous women, the Committee of Indigenous Matriarchs, and approved by City Council in December. Today we share with you the Métis word, ward, which is in East Central Edmonton, from the Yellowhead to south of the Sherwood Park Freeway. Métis is a my shift word that refers to a people who are descendants of the marriages between French and Scottish fur traders and Indigenous women. These descendants now form a distinct culture and nationhood in the Northwest. Thank you, Jan. Our opening words are by Eric Williams. Blessed is the sky and all that is warm and filled with light. 
Blessed is the air and all that is open and free. Blessed is the earth and all that is steady and firm. Blessed is the sea and all that is hidden and deep. Our opening words this morning are by Jennifer McLaughlin. As the first hint of green begins to peek through the barren ground, as that little sprig grows into a healthy stem, as that stem grows into a stalk and forms a bud, as that bud slowly opens with each new day to form a yellow daffodil, let us be like the first hint of green renewed by the warm of the sun's rays and ready to emerge with a new energy, ready to face the day. We light this chalice to bring a glimmer of that warmth into our space. Now I invite you all to join to gather the spirit. do a meditation on the four directions it's uh, traditional to actually face the four directions so i'd invite you if you'd like to either stand and turn as we lead you through or look at the four directions as we go through um, in the pagan tradition which is grounded in a respect and reverence for the natural world calling upon the four directions is the usual way to begin any ceremony 
Each direction is associated with an element of the natural world and represents some part of the human nature as well. The directions are not seen as separate and isolated, but rather as part of the interdependent system that makes up the world. I'll invite Jan to begin us by addressing the East. This is handy, I'm facing East right at this moment. We begin in the East toward the rising sun. The element of the East is air represented by a feather. Air and breath give us life. It is the direction of inspiration, the word that literally means to take in air. The East is associated with the mind, with knowledge and learning and intellectual curiosity. Imagine the birds turning and wheeling in the air. Imagine the breeze blowing through your hair. Turn, turning toward the East, we look for a fresh start, an invigorating breath, a new idea. When you are feeling stuck in a rut, beholden to a routine, or if the wind has gone out of your sails, look eastward. We move around the wheel to the south. The element of the south is fire. Fire is a transformative force. It is heat and light and powerful change. In the Northern Hemisphere, it makes sense that we associate the South towards the equator with the warmth of the sun and the heat of the flame. We see birds move South, butterflies move South, whales move South, seeking warmer places when the weather gets cold. When our internal weather gets cold, turning South is a metaphor for turning towards warmth and daylight seeking out the changes that will warm us up, get our blood moving, call us out of our winters, out of hibernation, into action. Continuing around the circle, we arrive in the West. The element of the West is water. In the West, we are drawn into our experience of our emotions. It's a direction that calls us to self-reflection and self-understanding. Our emotions move in us like water, flowing through our lives, sometimes calm and sometimes turbulent, but always flowing. When we dam up our feelings, just like when we dam up a river, the pressure builds until it finds an outlet. If you are seeking to get in touch with your inner life, with your emotions, turn to the West. We move now to the North. The element of the North is Earth. There is stability here, the ground of our being. The North represents the place that holds us, that allows us time and space to heal and grow to feel nurtured and respected. It is also the place of embodiment, of connecting with our physical self, with the concrete, tangible world around us. The North calls to you if you are seeking balance, the deep wisdom that lives in your bones, a place of rest and recovery. It's time for another hymn with Mice Muted. Let's join in singing together for the earth forever turning.
Our theme for the month of May is story. So it seemed quite fitting that we should include this following story in today's service. It's called Mayfly Day by Jean Willis and Tony Ross. Here's Mayfly. It is her first day on earth. It is also her last. Mayflies only live for one day. But is she sad? Not at all. She is happy to be alive. This isn't any old story. This is the best of days. She lives for each moment. She sees the world begin. She hears the crack of dawn and bathes in its golden glow. A billion buds burst open, all for her. She tastes their honey. Mayfly sees eggs hatch, babies born, lambs learning to stand, the busyness of ants, the dizziness of children, the loveliness of things. She feels the sun's warm hug the kiss of summer, the magic of the rainbow. This is her wedding day. Trees throw confetti. There are games on the lawn. Breezes blow, bells chime, birds sing. She dances to the music of the universe. Mayfly lays her eggs. It is a perfect night, the best of nights. She makes one last wish. Little ones, may all your tomorrows be as perfect as my yesterday. Mayfly watches the moon come up and the stars go out and is thankful for her wonderful life. Our message this morning is from Reverend Linda Reinhart Niece. Uh, she's from Boston. That will be important later on. She says, Oh, the surprises of spring. Each year I sit and wait for the snow to melt, the earth to soften, and the tenacious green sprouts to push their slender stalks up toward the sun. New life from what was once dead. Renewal and rejuvenation abounds. The traditions and rituals of this time of year all reflect the themes of renewal, rebirth, and rejuvenation. Color returns to the world after a brief monochrome days and long lingering nights. Daylight is once again restored, warming the earth and encouraging sleeping creatures to rise. Many years ago, I thought that the first day of spring was March 17th. Think about what's on March 17th. Consequently, I believe the color of spring was Kelly green, mostly due to my familial observance of this day. Dressed in our Irish hand-knit sweaters and green clothes, we celebrated spring with a parade and a feast of corned beef. However, I associate green not with being Irish, but with the seasonal change to spring, since the wee gardens that steadfastly appeared along the city streets of Boston sported the same color. Back then, everyone I knew had Irish ancestry, and I was told, ah, oh, sure, spring is here, we're wearing the green. Little did I know at the time that not all cultures in the world celebrate spring with St. Patrick's Day green. For Northern cultures around the world, this is a time of rebirth, renewal and rejuvenation. From the streets of India to the Alpine villages of Switzerland, spring is joyously celebrated. In addition, ancient sites are places of festival celebration and awestruck wonder as the solstice sun brings light to dark passages or rises behind huge standing stones. Saying farewell to frigid lifeless days of winter and warmly greeting the new born flowers of spring is a tradition fondly kept by many. 
Rebirth is also a very common theme for the Abrahamic traditions. For Jews, the days of Passover are a reminder of their rebirth from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. Christians celebrate Lent and Holy Week, which begin the days of fasting and abstinence and joyfully conclude with Easter. Later in May, Muslims will observe Ramadan. They're actually already observing Ramadan <laughs> this year, which is also an observance of fasting and renewal. Fasting as a ritual is common in many cultures at this time of year. For me, it's a reminder of the labor of rebirth. When we fast, we are like sprouts pushing up from hard shells. Having laid within the dark, cold earth, something stirs the plant to push to the light. Fasting helps us purge the waste and toxins from our bodies, minds, and spirits in order to emerge into the joyous light of rebirth, renewal, and rejuvenation. Rejuvenation for me begins in the weeks before spring comes with the annual seed catalogs. I learned long ago that the most items found gloriously growing in pictures within the catalogs will not grow in our temperamental New England climate something I think we can relate to here in Alberta. However, dreaming of the pink, yellow, and lavender blossoms that do miraculously appear each spring always makes me feel rejuvenated. Nevertheless, it is gardening that truly rejuvenates. Gardening is a contemplative practice. Like meditation, gardening empties the mind, allowing the gardener to open to the beauty of nature, to the whispers of spirit, and to the lessons that lie buried just beneath the surface of the conscious, much like the seeds and bulbs that are buried in the dirt. Gardening for me is also akin to midwifery. As I gently remove winter's waste from around the plants in my garden, I feel as if I'm helping the tender green shoots to birth into the warmth of the sun. No matter how you celebrate the coming of spring, May your days be filled with warmth, may your nights be starlit, and may this season of rebirth, renewal, and rejuvenation bring you hope, peace, and love. Now let us sing together the wonderful song, always reminds me of the Muppets, uh, the garden song, inch by inch, row by row. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain come tumbling down. Pulling weeds, picking stones We are made of dreams and bones Feel the need to grow my own For the time is close at hand Grain for grain, sun and rain Find my way in nature's chain Tune my body and my brain To the music of the land Inch by inch, row by row, inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Plant your rows straight and long, seasoned with a prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. There's an old crow watching hungrily. From his perch on yonder tree 
In my garden I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. Inch by inch, row by row, inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain come tumbling down. One more time, inch by inch, inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rain. you into a time of meditation. Take a couple deep breaths in and out. Find a settled spot to sit in, your back supported, your heart open, and close your eyes if that helps you focus. Spirit of life, ground of our being, root of unified mystery growing into myriad branches of expression, bring us together now. Bring us close to the earth, ear to the whispering grass, quietly, attentively, waiting with slow breaths, listening for the very stones to cry out with their rocky stories of tectonic plates meeting and parting, meeting their memories of Hadean days, molten rocks flowing, and joining their ancient legends of stars born out of the collapse of other stars. Help us to remember. Help us to piece together our oneness with matter, our oneness that matters. With one more deep breath, may we rise star stuff walking and rolling across the surface of an impossible blue-green planet. May we join together to heal what is divided. May we find wholeness within, without, among, and between. Eternal source, seed of the universe, help us to grow peace. So be it, blessed be, amen. Each week, we take time during our Sunday morning service to acknowledge the joys, sorrows, concerns, and celebrations that are not only part of our own personal lives, but also part of our larger community. Using the chat icon on your computer, I invite you now to type in a thought, a wish, a prayer that is on your mind or on your heart. I will not be reading the messages this morning aloud, so they will not show up as part of our recording of this service. As you write your thoughts, let's listen to A Branch of May.
were on the phone, our last slide was a branch of magnolia blossoms and on was a little tag that said, I love you. May we keep all of these thoughts and prayers and wishes in our hearts as we worship together. Each week, we take time during our Sunday morning services to acknowledge, oh, no, I did that already. Oh, we are still going to acknowledge something, yes. <laughs> Uh, our self-governing uh, and self-supporting community. How's that for a celebration or something worthy of celebration? One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to, is to provide all of the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting our church community, we also encourage you to make a commitment beyond our walls. For the month of May, you are invited to share your abundance with youth empowerment and support services. On your, your screen, you will notice information on how to donate to this organization. You can also visit our church website, uce.ca, for murder, further information. Let us join in singing together from you, I receive. All right, let's think about singing from you, I receive. <laughs> the music's not running. Music's not running. Let's, uh, Andrew, shall we just continue with our, oh, it's there. Okay, we'll carry on. All right, here it is, everyone. A short while ago, our very own Reverend Audrey Brooks emailed me a copy of one of her poems. I realized very quickly that the lyric quality of this poem would lend itself very easily to the creation of a hymn. Now this was something that was on my bucket list for a long time to actually write a hymn. We tweaked the lyrics ever so slightly to fit into a melody that I had written. And so it is with great excitement that we invite you to sing for the very first time in human history call us again i hope you enjoy I guess. So 
Let us go now into the sun-washed light of the blossoming world. May the inner light of our own being add its bright, bright blessings to the dappled days and enhance the glow of nightfall. Amen. Our words for extinguishing the flame this morning come from Eric Williams. May the firmness of the earth be yours. May the flow of water be yours. May the freedom of the air be yours. May the fierceness of fire be yours. May all the gifts of this life, the below and the above, be with you now and remain with you always. Before we conclude, I would like to thank all those who, are, who participated in this service this morning. Our greeter, Karen Belita, recorder, Lynn Wolf, slide runner, Andrew Mills, readers, Jan McMillan and Robert Begg, YouTube and SoundCloud uploader, Ruth Marriott. I would also like to remind you that our annual general meeting will begin at 11.45. And so let us join together in singing our closing song, Carry the Flame. So the annual general meeting of UCE will take place at 1145 today. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just stay right where you are, take a little break and come back. The business of the meeting will include staff and committee reports, election of officers and members of the board of trustees, election to congregational committees and selection of delegates to the CUC annual meeting and of course, a look at our budget for the upcoming year. So we'll see you all at 11.45. After the announcements, there'll be a mini coffee hour breakout rooms that you're welcome to join us for, but the AGM, as Gloria said, that there will be um, the AGM starting at 11.45. Thank you.